Hi everybody, welcome back to Photorec.tv. I'm Toby and I want to talk about the new Sony 12-24 f2.8, a world's first, widest, fastest lens. It costs $3,000. Let's talk about why you might want to buy it. This video is brought to you by Squarespace. If you start at squarespace.com slash photorectv, you can save 10% off your first purchase. Let's get into some reasons why you want to buy the Sony 12-24 f2.8. The first and easiest reason is you want the fastest and widest lens possible for your Sony camera. There is no other lens for Sony that starts at 12 and goes to 24 and provides a constant f2.8 maximum aperture. And that's a quite a versatile range. 12 incredible wide-angle landscapes, astrophotography opportunities, and 24, you actually can start to get into some nice environmental portraits. Really nice range. Now, I put a little asterisk there, not because I have very few samples to show you over that range. The lens arrived for testing during one of the smokiest weeks in Seattle's history because of the wildfires, so I did not do any astrophotography with it, which just breaks my heart, and I've had to send it back already. I will be getting it back in the future and doing a specific video just on astrophotography with this lens. So please hit that subscribe button along with the bell so you'll be notified of those future videos. No, I put an asterisk there because some of you could argue that a 16 to 35 range is a more versatile wide angle. It's a very common wide angle. It provides pretty wide 16 starting and up to 35 almost completely normal focal lengths. Some of you might find that a more versatile range. I'd love to hear in the comments, which focal range do you prefer for your wide angle? The ultra wide, starting at 12 or 14, or the more normal, starting at 16, going up to 35. Let me know down below. Thanks so much. Another reason you might want to buy this lens is it's distortion free. That's impressive for a lens this wide. Now, of course, we do get some bending out on the edges. We'll talk about that in more detail in a moment, but we're not getting any wavy lines. This lens produces nice straight lines. And another reason that this lens is impressive and that you might want to buy it is there's no flaring. If the sun's hitting the front element and you don't have a lot of the flare that you get with some of the more affordable wide angle lenses. Another reason you might want to buy this lens is it's fast, smooth, and accurate, and silent autofocus. Now, over the course of this video, I'm going to be making some comparisons to the Sigma 14-24 f2.8, as I alluded to in the opening. But when I compare focus and autofocus, the Sony is a clear winner. Faster, smoother, and silent. Whereas the Sigma, not as much. So if you're especially in the video world, the Sony would be a clear winner between these two. Even for stills, though, the Sony is faster. And another reason you might want to buy the Sony 12-24 f2.8 is that it accepts affordable filters. Now, it might sound a little funny to put a $3,000 lens out on the table in front of you and say, hey, one of the reasons you should buy this is the filters are cheaper. The Sony 12-24 accepts glass rear filters. It's got a little spot for them. You can get a set of four ND filters that slot in there for under $110. That's nice. Not only are they affordable, but they are quite compact as well. If you look at other wide angle filter systems that don't accept rear filters, you're looking at something like the Nissi front filter system that the main holder itself is 130. And then one of those pieces of glass, which is not very portable and quite fragile, is $245. If you wanted four of those, plus that holder, you're talking about a $1,000 investment. Now, I will say that there are mixed reviews about these rear filters. The glass ones, I haven't tried yet. The gel ones that I've tried in the past, I've been quite unhappy with. The glass ones look better. The reviews for the Sigma are quite positive. The ones that are being used by the Sony 12-24 f4 lens are a little less positive. But let's move on. Another reason you might want to buy the Sony 12-24 f2.8, you only put Sony lenses on your Sony camera. If something goes wrong, you want one company to call, or you just like to see the colors and the logos match. 
Some of you might think that's a silly reason. I kind of do. But if you fall into that category, this is a reason why you might want to buy this lens. And finally, you know how to rock wide angle lenses. If you are a beginner to photography, I want to caution you that wide angle lenses are not the answer for amazing landscapes right off the bat. Here's what happens. You walk up to a gorgeous scene. You're like, wow, this is beautiful. I'm going to put my wide angle lens on and capture all of this. And then when all of that is presented to your viewer, the wide angle just makes so much of what was epic about many scenes small and diminished. It makes mountains into molehills. And so it's much easier as a beginner to use longer focal lengths to make impactful landscape photos. But if you know how to rock wide angle lenses, and for many years I did not, and I was like, I don't really understand what's so great about wide angle lenses. And then I became a better photographer. I still have a lot of growth left, but I started to be able to recognize scenes where a wide angle lens works well. Here's a 17 millimeter in Yosemite's Valley view. I love this shot that I captured at the beginning of this year. A wide angle lens made it possible to get all of those little rocks in the foreground captured nicely. Longer focal lengths would have missed that. So there are absolutely good reasons to have a wide angle lens, but you got to know what you're doing or you're wasting your time or your money. Speaking of money, let's move on to reasons why you would not buy this lens. This video is brought to you by Squarespace. Look, a couple of years ago, I decided that I was tired of worrying about my website, worrying about whether or not it was being hacked and sending spam mails. That happened. Worried about whether or not all of my plugins were updated, worried about whether or not there was another plugin I should enable that would allow better SEO and security. And well, I've switched to Squarespace. That's where I host Photorec.tv. I appreciate the worry-free hosting they provide. I know that my site is up and running. I know that it's working well. I know that it's not getting hacked. And they provide tons of additional details that gives me fantastic information about the health of my site, the visitors and the analytics. And they just make it so dang easy to have a beautiful website that is working well. I sleep better at night, truthfully. If you start at squarespace.com slash TV, you can save 10% off your first purchase. Let's move on to reasons why you would not buy this lens. It's expensive. $3,000. It puts it in a, a class that is not so reachable by many photographers. That's not to say you shouldn't buy it, but maybe you or, or you or I don't know. It's expensive. You got to keep that in mind. Also, don't buy it if you're bothered by slight vignetting at f2.8 and 12 millimeters. Now, I put this in there just to let you know that I did do some deep dives and some pixel peeping for you in this review. And yes, there's some vignetting. Here we are at 12 millimeters, f2.8. You move up to f3.2, it's a little better. Move up to f3.5, it's a little better. Move up to f4, it's virtually gone. If we move to f5.6, there's no difference between f4 and f5.6 as far as vignette goes. I mean, you got to expect that. This is a 12 millimeter f2.8 lens. All lenses that are wide have some vignetting. This one does too. It's slight and it's easily controlled and corrected in Lightroom. But another reason you might not want to buy the 12 to 24 is that you want the sharpest lens. Now, yeah. So, as I said, I didn't do a ton of exciting shooting with the 12 to 24, but I did spend a lot of time shooting brick walls. And I compared the brick wall shots and some other shots as well against the Sigma 14 to 24 f2.8. And what I found is that consistently the Sigma was a little bit sharper. Now you were looking at a 300% view of both images. We are cropped in and we're in the center, and I'd give the win to the Sigma. Let's move up to the corner. I'd give the win to the Sigma. Now I'm only showing you one example. I have multiple where I autofocus multiple times, manually focused carefully. So I just picked the examples that show what I got fairly consistently. And that is that the Sigma did better. And you might say, well, okay, yeah, 12. The Sigma doesn't even go to 12, so why compare? Well, you move up to 17 and the Sigma still does a little bit better. You move all the way up to 24 and the Sigma does a little bit better. 
across the board consistently, the Sigma did a little bit better. Again, I had to super pixel peep to find this, but the Sony wasn't sharper is another way to say that. Another reason why you might want to skip this lens is you have a nice collection of high quality threaded front filters. We already talked about the filters, but I'm just saying if you own the 16 to 35 and you're excited about using those filters on your 12 to 24, well, of course, that just doesn't work that way. And another reason you like to watch your weight. No, I'm sorry, I'm not insulting you, your camera bag. Maybe you bought into mirrorless because you wanted a smaller, lighter system. I, I mean, give yourself a reality check. We're not going to have a 12 to 24 f2.8 lens that is incredibly small and lightweight. But let's take a moment and see how it compares against some other similar lenses. We've got the Sony 12 to 24 f2.8 that I we're talking about in this video. It weighs in at 1.87 pounds, 847 grams. Compared to the Sony 16 to 35, which I've only briefly mentioned at the beginning being what some of you might find a more versatile wide angle lens, that's a pound and a half. The Sigma 14 to 24 that I've referenced many times in this video comes in at basically the same as the Sony. So, you know, you're sacrificing some millimeters and you're only gaining or losing a tenth of a weight. So, oh, so is that how much a millimeter weighs? A fifth? A, never mind. If anybody wants to do that math, I don't think it works that way. And I threw into this example in comparison the Tamron 17 to 28 f2.8. And that's the lens that's sitting here on my Sony right now. In a lot of ways, it should not be in this comparison because it starts at 17. That's a significant difference. We'll look at that in a moment. But it is half the weight of the Sony, and it does still provide that constant f2.8 maximum aperture. And I've been shooting with this lens now over a year, and I've been pretty happy with its results. Although I like the Sigma an awful lot as well. And then you look at the kind of dimensions of them. The Tamron, of course, is much more compact and the Sony is quite large. But I just wanted to caution you about those sizes and weights. And again, you have to have a reality check with a lens like this. It is going to weigh a significant amount. Let's look at these focal ranges for a moment because you might be saying, all right, well, sacrifice two millimeters and I uh, less, you know, less weight and this lens costs less. Well, yeah, but two millimeters at the wider angles is a significant amount. Here's 12 millimeters of this lodge. Here's 14. Here's 17. It's a pretty significant difference. Let's walk back to 12. And then here's 24. So we can see that range is pretty significant. Now, I was curious, as I said, there's no distortion in this lens other than what you get with any wide angle lens. If you look out towards the edges of the frame, the trees, and especially over on the right hand side, that garden post archway, it's not vertical. You, when you measure it against the vertical of the edge of the frame, you can see that it's leaning. That's just a fact of wider angle lenses. So guided transform is off. This is basically straight out of camera other than a minor exposure adjustment. If we move forward and look at where I've turned guided transform on, we can see that we've got very nice straight lines all the way out to the edge. This is using Lightroom's guided transform. And funny enough, this view is much more similar to 14. So in a way, you could say that you get incredibly straight 14 millimeter field of view with this. And the Sigma, then you say, oh, are they equal? No, they're not equal because if you guided transform 14 with the Sigma, you're going to end up at something closer probably to 16. So just keep that in mind. We're going to start to wrap this up. It's a short video. Conclusions. The engineering of this Sony 12 to 24 f2.8 is impressive. As I said, nobody else has this. They've done a nice job with it. There's a lot to like about this lens. But at that $3,000 price, and the fact that if you sacrifice just two millimeters, which isn't insignificant, I'm noting that. There is a noticeable difference between 12 and 14. But if you sacrifice just those two millimeters, you do save a big amount. And you end up with a sharper lens. I'm not sure why I put a question mark on that. Other than to say, this is an issue with YouTube. I, I YouTube reviewers. I had one lens to review. Maybe that lens isn't as sharp as one of other Sony lenses. So I'd love to see what Roger at Lens Rentals 
does when he gets 10 of these in hand. But I am a little disappointed that a $3,000 lens does not perform as well as a lens that is less than half the cost. So, I'd love to know in the comments down below. Again, I ask for you to tell me what you think is a more versatile wide-angle focal length. What do you think about the Sony 12-24 f2.8 $3,000 lens? What do you think about the new Sigma? And I'm not going to do a full and complete review of the Sigma other than to say I really like it. And if you're looking for a compact wide-angle lens that doesn't break the bank for your Sony, I can easily recommend this. If you need the ultimate widest, well then of course the Sony that we've been talking about in this video is the one you should choose. And the Tamron, well send me an email, let me know your budget and your ideas and I'll be happy to kind of give you a personal recommendation or put it in the comments down below, but I've been personally happy enough with the Tamron. Just a reminder, you can support this channel by going to photorec.tv slash squarespace or squarespace.com slash photorectv. They both work. The magic of the internet. That'll save you 10% off your future purchase at Squarespace. They have a 14-day no credit card trial. You can try it out, play around, see if it's for you. There's no gotchas. If you don't decide to continue, you don't get charged. If you decide to continue, then you hand over your payment information. It's just that easy. And of course, if you plan to buy anything that I've talked about today, and you want to see any of my gear recommendations, they're listed right down below this video. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.